Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Bramble Gaming, and before we get into this list, let me lay down the rules for this ranking system. The bosses in Mega Man 11 will be ranked in the superhero difficulty only, as their attacks and speed are greatly enhanced in this hardest mode. On top of this, since all of the first 8 bosses are designed so that they can be fought in any order, I'll be ranking the how hard their fights are when solely using the Mega Buster, which is Mega Man's default weapon and the only weapon you start with. I cannot emphasize this enough. All Robot Masters are ranked in difficulty based upon how tough they are when using only the Mega Buster. If I face them with the weapons that they're weak against, there would be no challenge. I'll still be ranking the other 3 bosses without limitations since they're only unlocked after beating all 8 Robot Masters. But with that all out of the way, let's begin the list. Bounce Man is definitely the easiest boss in Mega Man 11 in my opinion, and was one of the only boss fights that I could beat in superhero mode easily without using an E-Tank during my first playthrough. Bounce Man starts this fight by bouncing off of the walls and using that momentum to try and ram into the player. The more you shoot him, the more momentum he'll gain, so in a way you're sort of encouraged to time your shots wisely instead of falling blasting the crap out of him. Once enough time has passed, Bounce Man will activate his speed gear and bounce around the arena at a much faster rate. But yeah, that's really all Bounce Man does, he just bounces around, and he's incredibly easy to dodge. Both of these factors make this fight the easiest boss battle in this game. It's showtime! Hunter Man is also extremely repetitive with his attacks, and they're extremely easy to dodge as well. However, his speed gear charge does a huge amount of damage and is a lot harder to dodge than the rest of his attacks. Reasons why he gets ranked higher than Bounce Man. In this boss fight, Tundra Man starts by skating and jumping around the arena in very simple patterns, during which you can only damage him when he turns around. After some time, Tundra Man will activate his speed gear, during which he will dash across the ice at an incredibly fast speed, and finish this phase by creating a snow tornado in the middle. Right after Tundra Man's speed gear deactivates, he'll go to the side of the arena and stand still for about 2 seconds, leaving himself totally vulnerable to any sort of attack. So as long as you have enough energy to slow down time during a speed gear phase, defeating this boss is a total breeze. Despite being the second to last boss in this game, Mavern's fight is an incredibly easy one, as not only does he have a low health bar, but all three of his faces are pretty easy to deal with. In his first phase, Mavern will float around the arena and shoot out one energy sphere every few seconds or so. He'll continue to do this until you shoot him enough to split open his shell, after which you can damage him while he shoots out four laser bullets every now and then, all of which are incredibly easy to avoid by just constantly moving around the arena. Once he gets to around half health, Mavern will engage his power gear, which he'll use to teleport around and fire out three lasers directly at the player. By using the speed gear during this phase, you can easily dodge these lasers and get in a load of damage before he teleports away. Finally, in his third phase, Mavern will teleport around the arena again and fire out these pellet sphere... things? I don't know, really, because I usually defeat this boss before he gets to his third phase. That alone should tell you how easy he is. Maximum impact! Now, this is where all the rest of the bosses on this list actually get pretty challenging, as they all keep on constantly dishing out attacks during the fight without giving you a moment to breathe. At number 8 on our list, we have the fight with Impact Man, one of the biggest and hardest hitting robot masters in this game. Impact Man will first jump around the arena, and upon landing, dash directly at the player, causing explosions when he crashes into walls. In addition to this, Impact Man will transform himself into a Y shape and drive explosive stakes into the ground during his first phase. These attacks all do a considerable amount of damage, and the explosive stake attack can be pretty hard to dodge. Once he gets to around 2 thirds health, this robot master will engage his power gear, during which he'll make himself a gigantic and dive bomb around the stadium. If you get caught in this explosion during this phase with under half health, it's basically an immediate KO, so you definitely want to watch his patterns and do everything you can to avoid his attacks while his power gear is engaged. This boss is definitely one that will leave an impact on your E-Tank supply, but as long as you're prepared and know what to do, Impact Man won't be that much of an issue. Time for an experiment! 
Next up on our list, the fight against Acid Man is definitely a tough one, since this boss is not only extremely agile, but he is also invincible to your attacks during roughly half of this battle. Acid Man will start the brawl by surrounding himself with an acid shield, which absorbs all the damage from your main weapon. With this shield activated, Acid Man jumps around the arena and shoots out acid pellets toward the player at a pretty fast rate. Once you either destroy his shield or enough time has passed, Acid Man will enter his speed gear phase during which he will swim through the acid and underneath the arena and surface only to fire more acid pellets at you before quickly going into the acid again. Not only do you constantly have to jump over the waves he creates in the acid, but you have a very limited time in which you can fire at him while he's in the air before he enters the acid again. This factor, alongside the health of his acid barrier, really makes Acid Man a tough opponent to fight. Drop you like a ton of bricks! Despite usually being the first boss that players fight in this game, mainly because he was the only boss featured in the demo, Blockman is one of the hardest bosses on superhero mode, which is honestly something I love about this game. In my opinion, there should be no such thing as a really easy boss. Each boss should bring their own difficulty and own challenge to defeating them. And every single boss delivers that in Mega Man 11, even the easiest ones. But anyways, enough about me rambling, let's talk about why Blockman is so hard to defeat. In total, Blockman has three distinct and different phases throughout this fight, the most phases that any Raw Master has in this game. On top of this, Blockman actually has two health bars that you have to knock out before you can finally defeat him during this battle. Blockman starts the fight by running around the arena and jumping towards the player as soon as they shoot at him. Right after he jumps, he will summon a bajillion bricks to drop on the player, forcing you to be strategic with his placement of the bricks if you actually want a shot at dodging them. Blockman will continue to repeat these attacks until you get him down to a third of his health, when he'll enter his second phase and engage his power gear, allowing him to turn into a gigantic rock golem to attack the player with. While Blockman's attacks in this phase are pretty predictable, they come at a pretty fast rate, so more often than not, you won't have time to get out of the way of golem's attacks. If you're lucky or skilled enough to hit him with a total of 10 charged shots before running out of health or E-tanks, Blockman will enter his third phase, where he will constantly switch sides of the arena and throw a never-ending barrage of rocks at the player. Even though his attacks in this phase don't do that much damage, the difficulty of his first and second phase definitely more than compensate for his final one. Despite dying way too many times against him, I enjoyed the surprising rise in difficulty for Blockman from normal to superhero, as his improved stats and deadly attacks make him a very tough challenge, but definitely not an unfair one. Prepare to diode! Fuse Man might be the most annoying robot master on this list, despite not being the hardest, as he is always moving and attacking you at incredibly high speed, and he never really stops. Plus, the electrical obstacles that constantly charge around the arena only add to the pain that this robot master brings. The second the fight begins, Fuse Man will summon four electric spheres that will charge along the perimeter of the arena. Directly after this, he will constantly teleport around to random locations and fire electric pulses at the player at an incredibly high rate. Then, once enough time has passed, Fuse Man will activate his speed gear and constantly teleport up and slam down onto the floor of the arena. This attack is incredibly fast and really packs a lot of damage with it if you get hit by his impact on the way down. You seriously have to conserve your speed gear energy during this fight, because if it overheats, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Trust me. Time to begin the countdown! Due to the speed with which Blastman attacks, and also due to how much damage his attacks do, this Robot Master takes the spot of the second hardest Robot Master in this game. Throughout the fight, Blastman will constantly fire up barrages of bombs at the player, sometimes shooting them from the ground or sometimes shooting them from above. Even though these bombs actually do a good amount of damage, Blastman doesn't get deadly until he activates his power gear and enters the second phase, where he'll send out gigantic bombs onto the battlefield from all angles, which deal enough damage to deplete around one third of your health if you get hit by them. Blastman spends the majority of this fight with his power gear engaged, which is incredibly annoying, so you'll definitely want to use your speed gear a lot during this fight if you want to have any chance of dodging his bombs. But be careful though, because just like the fight with Fuse Man, if your speed gear overheats, then Blastman will blow you to smithereens in probably only a few seconds. Fall to the fist of flame! At number 3 on our list, we have the fight against the Manly Torchman Man, which is the hardest out of the 8 Robot Master fights, in my opinion. In this fight, Torchman will keep on attacking the player with an onslaught of flaming punches and kicks constantly jumping up into the air and dive bombing the player with even more flaming kicks. Once you get far enough into the fight, Torchman will engage his power gear, which allows him to jump around the arena and throw out huge flaming wheels of fire, finally finishing this phase by jumping up and creating a fire tornado at the position of the player. 
Now, the reason I find Torchman to be harder than every other Robot Master in this game is because all of his attacks in his normal phase are incredibly fast, powerful, and unpredictable. He'll quickly pick himself up from the impact of any attacks that he dishes out, and immediately attack you with a counterattack. To add on to this, the opportunities and tactics through which he actually can deal damage to this Robot Master are pretty limited and precise, so you're definitely going to have to be extremely quick and on point if you want to be able to take this one down. End of the line, Mega Man! The final boss fight against Dr. Wily is definitely one of the most aggravating and hardest fights in Mega Man 11, not only because of the variety of his attacks, but also due to the extreme length of the battle. This boss fight has around 6 different phases and 2 consecutive health bars, each of which you need to knock down all the way before you can de finally defeat this boss. In my opinion, the last 3 phases are easier than the first two, but hey, if you don't think so, then that's your opinion, and I'm not going to argue with you over it. But feel free to argue with everyone else down in the comments, because people love doing that. Anyways, Dr. Wily starts off his fight in his flying skull helicopter and continuously fires missiles at the player, either raining them from above or coming toward the player from the side. What you're intended to do to damage this boss here is to climb these rockets and fire from on high, but to be honest, I found these rockets to be extremely difficult to platform off of in superhero mode, so I just used some of the diagonal special weapons from the Robot Masters. Even if you're not platforming on them though, you still need to be extremely careful as getting hit by the rockets do a crap ton of damage. Once you get to the skull copter around half health, Dr. Wily will station it into the ground and pull on the conveyor belt beneath Mega Man, continuing to shoot out rockets and firing energy balls in his face. If you can manage all of his deadly attacks and get his health bar entirely depleted, this game gives you the ultimate juke, as it pretends like you've beaten the final boss, but then Wily comes back with full health in a completely new machine, and he's out for blood. This final form has four different faces to it, including the speed gear phase, the power gear phase, and finally the double gear phase. In his default phase, Wily will fly around the arena and summon mechanical gears to consecutively throw towards the player. Once he's done that enough times, Wily's speed gear will engage, during which Wily will circle around the arena with incredible speed and shoot out gears to attack the player. Then, after some time, Wily will enter his power gear phase, where he will float back and forth around the arena, forcing you to slide under his machine if you don't want to get hit. If you can't deal with all these attacks and get Dr. Wily incredibly low on health, he will finally enter his final phase, where he continuously teleports around the arena and charges at the player. Now, I found this last phase to be the easiest one, as by just using the Tundra special weapons at the right time, you can easily knock Dr. Wily out of this boss fight. Overall though, the face off against Dr. Wily is still an incredibly long boss fight with a very challenging difficulty, as this fight will have you pulling out all of your tactics that you've unlocked along the way to take him down and complete this game. But, alas, in my opinion this isn't the hardest boss in this game, no no. This next boss on the list will almost have you ripping out your hair due to its power and difficulty. And finally, the hardest boss in Mega Man 11, especially in superhero mode, is the fight against the Yellow Devil Mark III. This boss is notorious for being an extremely tough boss in previous Mega Man games, and the developers perfectly recreated that frustration and difficulty for his fight in the new one. For starters, this boss won't even begin the fight on screen as he will start this battle by sending his body segments from the left of the arena at an incredibly fast rate. Oh, and these body segments do nearly a third of your health, so if you get hit by four of them, you've already lost the fight and have to start it all from the beginning again. Zip, zam, zoom, boom, and you're dead. If you think that these pellets are easy to dodge, think again, as even by spending hours trying to memorize the pattern in which they come at you, the player requires so much precision to dodge them that it's almost guaranteed that you'll end up slipping up and taking damage from this attack. You better get used to it though because Yellow Devil spends over half of the battle throwing his extremely deadly attack at you. Once his body structures, he'll take one singular shot and then break apart into his body segments again. This gets super annoying, seeing as how the Yellow Devil is only susceptible to damage when his body is formed and he's taking a shot at you, letting you only get in one shot of damage before the Yellow Devil becomes invincible by switching to his default attack. And if you think that's all he does in this boss fight, he couldn't be more wrong than that. Yellow Devil only rubs salt in the gaping wound when he activates his speed gear, turning into a crap ton of miniature Yellow Devils that will rush around the stadium in the hard to dodge patterns. Even during his speed gear phase, all of Yellow Devil's attacks do an incredible amount of damage, and his overall health bar isn't anything to laugh at either. 
Your best bet to beating this boss is to hit him with Blast Man's power gear bombs, but even then you run the risk of overheating your double gear system, which is an incredibly risky move since the speed gear is a lifesaver in this fight. You get ready to die a lot at Yellow Devil's hands, as the precision which you need to dodge his overkill attacks and extremely limited window in which you can actually deal damage to him make this boss fight the hardest in Mega Man 11. Well my gamers and gamettes, those were all the Mega Man 11 bosses ranked from easiest to the hardest. Yet again, that was my opinion, so if you think Dr. Wily was harder than Yellow Devil or whatnot, there's no reason to get mad or triggered at me. With that said though, did you enjoy my list or did it completely suck, just like my puns? Make sure to comment down below with your list and hit that subscribe and notification bell to never miss another boss ring upload again. With all that said, Bramble Gaming, over and out.